All right. Uh, good morning, second block. It is Thursday, March 23rd. It is your first day back of the fourth quarter. Um, I know this isn't perfect for me to be gone, but we have a track meet today in Lincoln, and it just is the way it is. So um, if it being the first day of the quarter, there are some things I needed to take care of via lecture. So uh, right now, you guys should have came in and just sat wherever uh, at this point. Um, <laughs> You guys will notice I have a new table in the back, so we'll make a little agreement here. Um, we'll do a little challenge. Um, if you guys can get yourselves in order by birthday, so in the front left seat in the far, far front of the room should be January, and then it should go up. And then when you go January, February, March, it should go back to the front. If you guys can get yourself in perfect birthday order, without verbally speaking to each other. Tomorrow when I come back, I will check it. And if it's good, you guys can sit wherever you want for the next month, okay? But I'm gonna tell Mrs. Sexton, you guys aren't allowed to speak when you do it. So I'll have her play some music in the background. Uh, when you do that, make sure you get up and you grab a new packet for biology, not the heat one for physical science. And then there should be two leaf worksheets you need. So Mrs. Sexton, please pause the video. Somebody besides Megan Millard needs to be a leader. Uh, no speaking, though, okay? No speaking. Got it? So uh, go ahead and pause it. When it's all done, unpause it. I'm going to keep talking about what's next, okay? So with that being said, a um, couple other quick announcements. If there's other grade issues, grades aren't due until Monday uh, for quarter three. I know I have one or two things I need to fix. We were busy moving all of spring break, so I... Uh, I have one or two things I need to catch up. If you have grade questions, I'll be back on Friday, okay? Otherwise, let's kind of power through our new chapter and you guys have work time today, okay? Uh, we finished off with cells, how cells divide, how cells move, how cells let things in. Now we're going to start talking about how do cells make those ener make energy, whether they're plant cells or, or animal cells, okay? So this really, you guys will notice I went down to the color copier very, very early yesterday morning, but we kind of combined these two chapters together because they're really the opposite of each other, and that'll make sense uh, in a minute here. So photosynthesis, you guys know a little bit about what it is. Respiration will go much more in depth, but photosynthesis is how plants make energy from sunlight. Respiration is how we breathe in and eat and turn that into energy in our mitochondria. Okay, so if you guys look in your packet, you'll notice the pictures are very, very intimidating, but they're also very, very familiar. Okay, very, very similar. Um, photosynthesis and respiration really are uh, very, very similar processes, and we'll learn that as we go. Okay, so um, Mrs. Sexton, feel free to pause it as needed, but otherwise, flip your notes here. I'm going to go through about a page of notes with you guys and get you going on the day. Okay, so. When we look at photosynthesis, guys, what we really start with and, and think about as far as the world is how organisms get their energy, okay? And it's very, very important. So we've learned these two words before. Just remember, an autotroph. If a gun is an automatic, it loads itself. If an organism is considered an autotroph, it is an organism that makes its own food. That might be using light, that might be using water, that might be using carbon dioxide, but the key thing is, is that they produce their own energy source. Whereas the prefix hetero we know has to do with other. So a heterotroph is an organism that eats other plants or animals for energy and nutrients, okay? So really, really important we go back over those again just because we'll find in the coming days here that plants are the most significant form of nototroph there is in the world. Uh, Mrs. McMahon left her greenhouse over all spring break and those plants just kept making their own food. They didn't have to eat anything else or anything like that, whereas Augie and Bodhi have to get fed from another source. They don't just go out and use sunlight to make energy. Okay, so good review there. Now, with that being said, if you go down the page a little bit here, there's this idea, this little diagram about what photosynthesis is. So, Mrs. Sexton, you might want to pause this so the kids can write and then they can listen, but... In our honors biology class, what we define photosynthesis as is the biochemical pathway. So bio has to do with living things. Chemical has to do with the chemistry of making substances and molecules. And that those two things together are the biochemical pathway in which, and you'll notice I put plants. We'll learn that it's not just plants. It's also algae and things like that. But when they convert sunlight energy into organic compounds, and there's that word organic compounds again, 
We know that that means it has to do with hydrocarbons and it has to do with things we can eat for energy. And we know that cows and animals and corgis can eat plants for, well, probably not corgis, but they can eat plants for energy every single day, okay? So with that being said, this diagram here is very, very simple, but it's also very, very important. Um, normally, if I'm here, I blare the circle of life from the Lion King because this little diagram right here really is the circle of life. So kind of take a second and make some arrows just showing how they lead into each other. But this is a very, very cyclical process, which means one thing leads to the next, which leads to the next. Okay. So Mrs. Sexton, pause it as you need to, but everyone, what we're learning about right now is going to be photosynthesis, okay? And if we think about what do plants need in order for photosynthesis to take place, there's three things you'll learn in the coming days that we know plants should need. Plants always need some type of light, okay? Now that doesn't have to necessarily be sunlight, like in Mrs. McMahon's greenhouse, but it has to be some form of ultraviolet radiation that excites those electrons, okay? We also know we have to water our plants, and then this is one that's becoming very, very important in the world. Sometime in the next week, I'll lose my temper about how we're destroying the rainforest and how our greenhouse gases are going up. But plants take up that carbon dioxide, and everybody, that carbon's pretty doggone important for what photosynthesis makes. What photosynthesis makes, so everyone take a deep breath in outside. That gas that we breathe in comes from plants and what they make during photosynthesis, which is oxygen. And then we know a lot of animals like deer and cows and even humans, if they're vegetarian, can eat those plants all day. And that carbon from carbon dioxide goes straight into an organic hydrocarbon molecule, specifically the simplest sugar of everything in the whole world that we eat called glucose. So we've learned how glucose is C6H12O6, and we knew earlier this year it's the simple sugar that's made in photosynthesis, okay? So with that being said, what ends up happening then, guys, that all happens in chloroplast, okay? We'll talk about that in just a minute here. Um, and, and you need to know that it's in chloroplast. There's specific parts of chloroplast, but what ends up happening then is plants make that, and then we, humans, go through a process called cellular respiration where we breathe in that oxygen and we eat that glucose and respiration everybody is how in our mitochondria we burn that glucose we find a way to break it down to make ATP in the form of energy and if you think about it the sunlight really should be its own little squiggly up here but in our bodies what do we make every single day we make water that's 70 percent of our body and if you take a deep breath out the gas that we exhale through respiration is called carbon dioxide so the main thing is, everybody, with this whole circle of life, is that one leads to the other. And respiration makes the stuff that plants need. It's what plants use during photosynthesis. And then what plants make during photosynthesis is what we need in respiration. So really, it's this huge symbiotic, cyclical feeding of each other. And it's really what makes the world go round, which is why I always call it the circle of life. Okay. Now, with that being said, Mrs. Sexton, feel free to pause it when needed. This is just the only page we're really doing, but we're focusing on photosynthesis for the next few days now. We've always said that photosynthesis can be broken down into two different stages, okay? So the first stage of it starts with what we call the light reaction. It starts with the light reaction because it needs light to occur. So sometimes we also call it the light dependent reaction because it depends on light. You'll learn in the coming days that that light, what it does is it excites electrons to move through the membrane of the chloroplast, okay? The second stage, I know I'm going fast, so pause it as needed. The second stage actually was originally called the dark reaction. Um, we have So we have the light reaction and we have the dark reaction, but you guys will hear this from me. The dark reaction really is a pretty sucky name because what it insinuates is that this second part of photosynthesis has to happen in the dark, and really that's not true. It can happen in the light. It can happen in the dark. It doesn't need it to be dark, though. So we kind of started calling it the independent, light-independent reaction. If you're independent of your parents, that means you don't need them for finances. This reaction is independent of light because it doesn't need it. More specifically, everyone, what we'll also call it in the coming days is called the Calvin Cycle. And that's because the guy who really focused on this, his name was Dr. Melvin Calvin. And if you look, the Calvin cycle is a process that plants use to turn carbon dioxide from the air into sugar. So really, this is about getting it all ready to go with light. And then the Calvin cycle is where we actually make that sugar. Okay. 
Now in a minute here, you'll see a picture that looks like this. This should look familiar from your cell projects, but this is a chloroplast which would only exist in plant cells, okay? Now, we'll talk about that in just a minute, but when we look at the light reaction, everyone, it takes place in what we call the thylakoid membrane. So go ahead and pause that, but these little stacks of pancake looking things are called thylakoids, and we know the membrane is the outside edge of those. So that will be really important, and actually, the picture at the front screen here, I know I'm going fast, but that picture right there is the membrane of the thylakoid, and that is where the light reaction takes place, okay? So with that being said, the dark reaction takes place in what we call the stroma. That's just the aqueous solution floating around in chloroplast, and you guys will look at those in just a minute here. Okay, so with that being said, last little stretch here. Um, when we learn these things, what you guys will also do today, I think this would be on the back page of your packets, uh, this is everyone a chloroplast and you guys today in class after you're done with your leaf diagram you guys need to go tell me where the thylakoids are and tell me what they do the stacks of those are called granum or if there's just one of them it's called the grana and then the stroma you guys need to label each of those and tell me what they do just using your Chromebooks and then you'll also see that there's two different envelopes here those are called the inner and outer membrane so make sure you understand why chloroplast have those okay Last little stretch here. So going back to the page before, when we talk about photosynthesis, most of you guys are in chemistry or will take chemistry. We want to understand that there is a chemical formula when this happens in plants, okay? So <clears throat> this part's going to go quick because I'm running out of time. But with that being said, we know plants take up carbon dioxide and water. And I've always wrote sunlight over the arrow because it's kind of the catalyst that makes it all happen, okay? We also just learned a second ago that what plants make is that oxygen that we breathe in and then the glucose that we can eat. Okay, so this part I know I'm going fast, but if we go write those chemical formulas, we should know that that's CO2, water is H2O, sunlight does not have an equation since it's energy, oxygen is a diatomic substance, and then glucose is C6H12O6. Mrs. Sexton, please pause the video so they can write this down and make sure I'd like you guys to try to balance it first, okay? So pause it. And now that it's unpaused, everyone, you should, if you balance it all, see that th there has to be six carbon dioxides to make C6. There has to be six waters to make H12. There has to be six oxygens made. And then we only make one glucose for every turn of this. I've always reminded my classes that's Satan's equation because it's six, 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 one if you put glucose last. Okay, so you guys will spend the rest of class learning about those thylakoids I talked about. And then you also, when I'm back, I will go through this. But at the end of class on Friday, I'll probably give you a leaf quiz. So if we were to cut a leaf open on the side, a leaf where we know photosynthesis happens, the leaf being we know where photosynthesis happens, okay? That's why they have those surface, that surface areas to absorb sunlight. Um, this is a, what's called a cross section of a leaf. So if you guys look at this diagram first, the colored pencil should be out, but what it has you do is it goes through and helps you understand this outer waxy covering is called the cuticle, just like in your fingernails. The epidermis, you're going to color yellow on the back. Epidermis is a scientific word for skin. Mesophyll, um, that's a word for tissue. Even inside of those skinny leaves, there's some different types of tissue. One of them spongy. One of them is palisade mesophyll. I've always taught classes the palisade is the big, tall pillars, just like on a palace. Whereas the spongy mesophyll is very, very open pockets of air like a sponge. Then you have this thing in the middle called a vascular bundle. That's a scientific name for a vein. And we know that inside of that vein, leaves have to carry things. And then they also have to open um, the bottom of their pores to let gases in and out. These things down here are called guard cells, and they open and close the stomata. We'll look at leaves and microscopes later, but that sheet will walk you through identifying them. And then I also gave you guys a different sheet where you guys have to go label the epidermis, go label the palisade, go label all of it. And then you also just in one or two sentences need to tell me what is the point of the cuticle? Why is where, where is it on here and why is it waxy? It keeps water in the leaf, okay? So with that being said, you guys just have that. And then um, that chloroplast picture, uh, if you do get done with stuff, Mrs. Sexton will have one or two more stretches you guys can do for things. Otherwise, I'll be back. Um, please feel free to rewind the video if you need to. I'll be back tomorrow. Please be productive. Uh, behave for Mrs. Sexton and be the honors class. I know you guys are. I will see you all tomorrow.